This is the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, the flagship phone with a built-in S Pen. Last year's Note 10 Plus has been my daily driver for an entire year, so I have a lot of thoughts on this one. Hello, my name is Brad and I review tech for creative professionals and there is so much to talk about with this phone. If you're going to be dropping a lot of money on a phone like this, you're probably watching several reviews. So instead of repeating the same thing that everybody else is talking about, whether that's the processor or exactly how many megapixels the camera has, I want to focus on something a little bit different in this review. I want to talk about the features that matter to creators, specifically artists, illustrators, and designers. To start off, let's talk about this screen. As expected, it's amazing. It is beautiful. Obviously, this phone is huge, and the screen is huge too. 6.9 inches. Still has those curves to the side that has been on the Note for several years now, and that makes the screen look even wider. It flows down into the edges. That also means that it's pretty easy to accidentally touch, so you're probably going to want a case for this to prevent those kind of false touches. Now, the enormous size is good and it's bad. The good is that it gives you a lot of room to draw on or to take notes. It does doesn't feel too cramped when you're writing or drawing. The downside is that it can be kind of hard to hold and operate with just one hand, even if you have fairly good sized hands. I'd say mine are like average size. I'm sure someone's gonna say something weird in the comments. Now the max resolution on this thing is 3,088 pixels by 1,440 pixels. That is a lot for a phone. But what's really cool here is this, this screen now runs at 120 hertz. That is a great buttery smooth refresh rate. One problem though, it can't run at that refresh rate at the full resolution. So you have to dial back that resolution if you wanna get that refresh rate. If I'm being honest here, I don't really notice it when I dial back that resolution resolution screen still looks great. And I think that refresh rate is more impactful to the overall user experience than the resolution. Of course, this is gonna tax the battery more than a smaller, simpler display. That's where Samsung's adaptive refresh rate comes in. What it's doing is it's changing the refresh rate based on how you're using the phone. So if you're reading text and not scrolling, it's going down to around 20 Hertz. And when you start using it, that's when it goes up to that higher 120 Hertz rate. Seems to work pretty well. I honestly cannot tell when it's up and when it's down, which I guess shows that the software is doing its job. Now, the other speed up here that I'm interested in is happening with the S Pen, but I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Mm, the S Pen, it's a little stylus that tucks into your bottom of the phone, very similar to the styluses that have come on older phones. Like last year, they added some extra features, an accelerometer, some Bluetooth features. Also means the stylus has a battery to it and it charges when it's plugged into the phone. What's cool and new here is they've knocked down the response time of this pen quite a bit from 42 milliseconds all the way down to nine milliseconds. That is impressive and also puts it on par with the Apple Pencil. Just pulling open the Samsung Notes app and drawing with it, there is no perceptible lag. It is amazing. Even slowing the camera way down, it's something to see. I was super skeptical about this because latency on last year's Note app was pretty good too. But in the apps that are available for Android, it's always been pretty laggy, especially compared to the iPad. But I'm excited to say this makes a huge difference. It's not as good as the Notes app when you're drawing in something like Ibez Paint or Medibang, but it's way better than any other Android device I have ever drawn on. And it makes me even more excited to try out the Tab S7 Plus. And no, I don't have one yet. Samsung hasn't opened up pre-orders. Eventually I'll get it, probably have the review up, but that's several weeks away. Now how good the performance of the pen is depends on the app. Medibang and Ibez Paint are just so-so, but I thought Sketchbook, Infinite Painter, and Artflow were all Pretty good, definitely better than last year's phone. Clip Studio Paint is now also out in the App Store, works really well on the phone. It is not in the Google Play Store. You're gonna have to search for it in the Galaxy Store. It's an exclusive to Samsung devices right now. I was so excited about Clip Studio, I made a whole video about it last week. Finally, Android has a full-blown professional drawing app. There's a six month trial. The subscription pricing kicks in down the road after that. I don't know what it is. They haven't listed it yet, but on the phone, you could use it for free an hour every day without having to sign up for anything. 
I should have mentioned this by now, but the S Pen is really good to draw with. It uses Wacom's drivers, so you're getting a really good line quality, you're getting great pressure sensitivity, and some apps, it could be a little too sensitive. Like, a little too good, if you know what I mean? Nobody knows what you mean, Brad. You're on a small phone, you have a tiny tipped stylus, it's gonna pick up every single hand wobble. It really depends on the app. I found Artflow and Infinite Painter to be pretty good. I love using Sketchbook. It's a great app, but one of the things is on a phone like this, with a stylus like this, I find the lines, it just picks up too much of my hand jitter. Also worth noting is Samsung includes some of their own goodies when you pop out that pen. I mentioned the Note apps already. That's the one that I use a lot. There's some others in there too that I don't use quite as much. There's a way to do a screen capture and write on your screen. That, that comes in handy from time to time. Then there's others like Live Messages and AR Doodle, stuff they released last year. I think the AR app exists so that you could show your friends what your cool new phone could do it's definitely worth playing around with if you get one of these phones but it doesn't have like a real practical application i've got to talk about this camera bump this is more than just a large square on the back of your phone so what most people put cases on their phones so that the camera bump is flush with the case who cares why are you talking about this brad so what this bump is so big that the case needs a bump to fit it. This bump is so big that when you lay it down flat, it is really pretty tilty. Even with a case on, this is particularly annoying when I'm drawing with it. Sometimes I can draw with it in my hands, but it's, it's not like super steady when you're doing that. For notes and stuff, that's fine. But if I'm gonna actually like get a nice line or something like that, I usually set it down on the table. And I'm gonna be honest here, this is the one thing that really kind of drove me nuts about using this phone is how tilty it is when you're drawing on it. I'm sure there's a perfectly good reason why that camera bump is jutting out so much. More spaces means you can fit better lenses, perhaps. Aesthetically though, I don't think it looks bad on the phone. I look, think it looks pretty cool, especially when you have a case on it. They even added some nice aesthetic little design touches here, like cool little bronze rings around the cameras. Weird thing happened with cell phones last year. Once Apple rolled out their big square camera bump last year on the iPhone 11, a lot of manufacturers said, cool, let's try that. And what we've seen happen since is something that amounts to a kind of bump war. It's hard for a phone to differentiate from every other phone out there right now, and this is a way to do it. When you hold up this phone, you could see that big honking camera bump on the back. That's a sure sign that you have a newer phone instead of some crappy one-year-old garbage phone that still works perfectly good. There's so many little features in this phone that the Note phones have had for a couple years, but I think are worth mentioning anyway if you're new to these sorts of things. For example, you can charge it wirelessly. You can use the phone itself to charge other things wirelessly. There's a fingerprint reader underneath the glass. The camera is, well, it's fantastic. It is very good. This year they even added a 50x zoom, which I would never use for anything, but it's kind of cool to say that it's there. Last year, I didn't pay much attention to Dex, but this year, I have. Dex takes your Samsung phone or your tablet and gives it a desktop mode. So in theory, what you could do is you could take your phone and it can be your only computer. Attach it to a monitor with a Bluetooth mouse and a keyboard and you've got a stew on. The reason I'm paying attention to this is some of the screen-based drawing tablets are starting to take advantage of Dex. For example, if you attach it to the Wacom One, Dex turns on and you can use any of the drawing apps on your phone right there on your tablet. Compatibility of what apps work fully on which devices also varies, so this isn't a perfect solution. Currently, I'm testing the new Huion on 22, which has some of these features built right in now, and they're a bit of a novelty, I'll, I'll admit that. But I like where this stuff is going. I think for an artist or an illustrator, the biggest problem of going the phone only route with a pen display on the side is the price. You're forking over a lot of money for a premium phone and spending a few hundred dollars extra to get a tablet to attach it to. And at that price point, you can get a really nice Windows computer and get the larger software selection to boot. But still, these devices have just started working this way over the last eight months or so. We're a lot closer to the beginning of this adventure than we are to the end, and I'm dying to know if Frodo makes it to the volcano. Not to beat a dead horse, but the non-Ultra version of the Note is a completely different phone, to be honest with you, and it's $1,000. And just by looking at the spec sheet, it's making a lot of compromises. A $1,000 used to be the best phone that you can buy in the known universe, and last year's Note 10 Plus, which was 
one of the better phones out there, a flagship for sure. It was $1,099. So what exactly are we getting this year for that extra $200. 5G is now built in, the screen is 0.1 inches bigger, there's obviously newer processors, the refresh rate is higher, uh, the pen is faster. But, and this is a big but, it's a year later. You expect all of those things, and this kind of bugged me. There is less storage on this year's base model than there was last year. Yeah, you could put a micro SD card in there and negate that, but still, I'm talking about value here. And six months down the line, I'm not going to notice a slightly larger screen anymore, but I'm definitely gonna notice less storage. The good news here is Samsung is always discounting their phones or running some kind of sale or promotion. When I bought mine, it came with $150 instant store credit. So you could pick up a new pair of the Galaxy Beans or Buds or whatever they're called. That's what I did last year when I bought my phone, but my Buds are still working really fine. So I grabbed the Xbox controller doohickey and a couple of cases. And yeah, if you're wondering, yeah, the Xbox Game Pass Ultimate Experience is really amazing. I really want to talk about it, but it doesn't really fit here on this video or even my channel. I might talk about it anyway. We'll see. So that is the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. What do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. Much appreciated. And I'll talk to you in a couple of days.